This is Black Market Leadership, the underground resource for disruptors and status quo breakers. So welcome to a new episode of Black Market Leadership. Today, this is exciting. I have a great, uh, really good friend of mine, Connor Evans, and this guy, this guy's a stud. He is, a, uh, <laughs> he is the equivalent of a brigadier general. He is an executive at a great uh, company, Wilson Construction, which is a top ENR 400. Is that right? We were recently ranked 202 uh, of the ENR 400. Wow. Congratulations. Thanks. Well, it's been around 130 years. They've got a good thing going. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So look, today our topic is a, a really cool document that you put together called the expectations document. And I, I, I just can't talk enough about this. This is a really awesome instrument for leadership. And uh, in my experience in the army, it's not easy to put together. And the fact that you put one together and it's, uh, it's as effective as effective as it is for you, this is amazing. So before we get into that, though, let's talk about you, Connor. I know you like talking about yourself, so let's do this. <laughs> Tell me, so give everyone a background. Who are you, where'd you come from, and how did you get to your position now? Sure. So Connor Evans, I uh, grew up in Pennsylvania, I attended the Virginia Military Institute for uh, undergraduate, was in the Army Reserves, uh, went to work for Clark Construction, where I kind of cut my teeth in the construction industry. Uh, learn construction management from a field perspective. Uh, absolutely in, invaluable time uh, as an assistant superintendent and then superintendent uh, learning really from the, the ground up. Uh, went to business school at Notre Dame, studied corporate finance, not with the intent to ever be a finance protect practitioner, but to otherwise develop uh, a weakness of mine. Uh, went back into uh, construction operations with a, a large international ENR top 10 firm called Balfour Beatty doing strategy and corporate development. Uh, probably about five years ago, moved back to the East Coast uh, uh, due to some uh, family personal matters and got on with a smaller regional firm, uh, Wilson Construction. We work in uh, eight states, have eight offices, and we're really a leader in the mid-Atlantic and Northeast market building senior living facilities, healthcare facilities, and uh, uh, education uh, projects. Though we do also get into some multifamily, some industrial, and some, uh, some retail work. So that's a little bit about my background, uh, my role. I'm a project executive and oversee the construction operations uh, for the New Jersey office based in Parsippany of Wilson Construction. So that's a mouthful. <laughs> now, you skipped over one thing. You went to uh, you went to basic training during your time at VMI. Is that correct? I did. Correct. I was in the Army uh, National Guard, Army Reservist. So, uh, before we get into this topic, because I think it's related to the military, tell me about your time in basic training. Anything stick out to you? Any any real learning lessons, or what did it teach you? Uh, it didn't teach me much <laughs> because I had gone after attending uh, my rat year of Virginia Military Institute. Uh, while I was there, I, I graduated um, honor graduate uh, and was the platoon leader for you know the nine or twelve weeks, however it was. Uh, I think I think it was neat uh, how there were so many different backgrounds meshing together. Uh, from inner city to rural to suburban, um, very diverse population, and it was mission driven. Uh, it was getting all these new individuals in what is otherwise to them for the first time a chaotic environment, and bringing order to uh, to the chaos. I'll tell you a funny story. Um, my father. Uh, he used to send me uh, speeches, uh, famous speeches in the mail while I was in basic training uh, from past historical uh, characters in our nation's history. And I loved reading them uh, as I had a break, you know, typical army hurry up and wait standing in line. And one day the platoon was just going bonkers 
everyone was tired and ornery. And the drill sergeant said to me, Evans, you better get them under control. I was like, I, <laughs> okay, how do I do that? And I actually pulled out one of these speeches that I had in my BDU pocket. And I was like, hey, guys, I'm going to read this to you. And they loved it. Absolutely loved it to where I wrote back to my father, send me more of these, send me more of these, send me more of these to where anytime we were in a formation waiting, they were asking me like, hey, pull out a speech, read it to us, pull out a speech, read it to us. So, um, you know, Teddy Roosevelt uh, it is good stuff. So that, that's my fondest memory of basic training. You know, as I think about it, because Connor and I both went to Virginia Military Institute, uh, I, one thing that I've been thinking about recently is that one thing that really separates, uh, I, I would say differentiates a military background from, from a civilian background is although people from the military, they do their basic training, they come together, but you know, they, they break you down and, but they, they really train you to one mindset, the same terminology, the same language. And so no matter where you come from, you speak the same language. That's okay. not the same in corporate America though, is it? It is not. No. Um, and not everyone has had that same unifying training. And so, you know, in any office leadership, uh, bringing a common cultural mindset together, uh, which I think is why that intentions and expectations memo is so effective because it's essentially getting out there, hey, this is where we're headed and this is how we get there. So you brought it up, the expectations memo. So what we're going to talk about today is Connor put together a two and a half page memo and it is a fantastic document because in a sense, it helps align your office. And how big is your office, by the way? Uh, there are about 20 people uh, here in the Parsippany office. Uh, the corporation, we have about 200 uh, staff professionals and about 200 craft workers. But here in Parsippany, we have about a team of 20. So in a sense, you, you put a document, two and a half pages, which is a very easy read. It's very simple to read, but this is able to unify 20 different people from 20 different backgrounds with totally different educational and uh, uh, experiential levels, completely different, and you're able to unify them. That's why this document is so important. Now, this document, I would tell you uh, for the audience here, this, domic, this, do, the, the, this document mimics what in the Army, or I should say in the Army and the Marine Corps, I'm not sure about the Air Force and Navy, it mimics what they call a commander's intent. Now, a commander's intent is usually a paragraph or two, maybe three. And what it is, it's a general ex, um, expression by usually the general officer, the officer in charge, of what success looks like. It doesn't tell people what to do, but it tells them what success looks like. And what I have here is just one example. There's a picture here, uh, and I'll put this on the website. It's an example of a commander's intent during the Civil War. Well, Grant... General U.S. Grant gave his uh, subordinate Sherman the famous orders, uh, the famous intent to go into Georgia for what we call the March to the Sea. And if you're not from the South, let me tell you, everyone knows the March to the Sea. That's where Sherman went in and raised uh, a, a whole pathway, a whole highway of damage from Atlanta to Savannah. And I just got to tell you a real quick story. A good friend of mine from West Point was driving through Georgia and went through South Carolina. He was speeding. And this uh, state trooper pull him over. He goes, son, no one goes that fast through South Carolina. And he goes, uh, <clears throat> Sherman did. And then he got an hour lecture about how the South could have won the war. But saying that, this example of commander's intent is this. I'm going to read this to you, quote, and I want you to understand what this is. This is a one, it's really one sentence. But this encapsulates what an, an intent is. So, quote, this is from Grant to Sherman. You, I propose to move against Johnston's army. That's the Southern General Atlanta. You, I propose to move against Johnston's army to break it up and to get into the interior of the enemy's country as far as you can, inflicting all the damage you can against their war resources. Now think about this. Sherman had 60,000 soldiers. He was, about, he was about to march 300 miles deep into enemy territory. And by the way, there were no phones. There were no cell phones. When that army went to enemy territory, the Union lost contact with them. So that one 
commander's intent there gave permission and even uh, the metrics for success were it's enormous, enormous organization to be successful and it was successful. So saying that, Connor took this idea of a commander's intent, which is incredibly difficult to put together. He did in, in this two and a half page memo. So let's talk about the memo. Two and a half pages and really the first three paragraphs of this are just your expectations. Uh, do you have in front of you or should I share the screen right now? You wouldn't mind sharing the screen? Yeah, I'm going to share the screen. Okay, so let's talk about this. There we go. So what you see here is the first three paragraphs. And just so for the people listening, the first paragraph is really one sentence. Crew, thank you for supporting the leadership team transition through fourth quarter of uh, 19. Uh, other people and myself, Connor, noticed the support and are very grateful for it. Transitions are inherently difficult, and you made it easy. And this is where he goes through it. And this is a really important paragraph. I'm going to read out loud, and we can talk about it. As we move forward through 2020, please keep in mind that our shared Wilson and North uh, New Jersey region goals. Yeah, so please keep in mind our shared Wilson and New Jersey region goals. They are to, now this is underscored, they are to have a fully engaged and competent team committed to creating raving fans by delivering projects safely on or ahead of schedule on or under budget and in accordance with the contribution margins established at the outset of the project and you'll see on the screen here that the fully engaged and competent team is underscored so is creating raving fans so is delivering projects safely on or ahead of schedule on or under budget and finally, the last part, which is underscored, is in accordance with the contribution margins established at the outset of the project. So what did you do here by underscoring all this, uh, Connor? So those are the most important aspects. So they speak to uh, employee engagement. They speak to client satisfaction. They speak to our core value of safety. They speak to uh, profitability. And so underlining, that's the goal. That's, that's where we want to end up. That's the purpose of this entire document is to state the behaviors and the intentions and the expectations of how we get to that goal. That's fantastic. And it's simple. And uh, you have, there's really four points here underlined. And this goes to another trend throughout this document. You keep things, you keep these items in threes and fours, I've noticed. Why is that? I believe it's, uh, it's how I best retain information. And I believe, in fact, it's how humans best retain information is keep it simple. No more than five, preferably three, and speak simply. Uh, I think a leader's role is to... Uh, find the information, categorize it, and distill it down uh, into simple talking points that people can remember. Now, it's, it's a chaotic world. Like I said, with VMI and with the Army, it's taking chaos and bringing order to it. Uh, and I don't mean just by organizational order of moving uh, chairs around, but uh, order of trajectories and goals and paths. It feels like, you know, traditionally, well, I, I, I won't say traditionally, but I'll say many a times I find that leaders and managers, they think linear. They think, you know, we're going to go to A, B, C, and D. We have to do it in that specific order. Everything has to be correct. If it's not correct, all chaos ensues. But reading this, it feels like you've created a highway. You've created a general direction with different lanes and you've given people their instructions of where to go, but now how, not how to get there. Here are the metrics for success. You find a way of how to get there. Would that be a, a, a way of saying it? Yeah. And, and you know, it, it prompts a thought that I've, that I've just had. It's almost like you have a whole bunch of uh, tributary roads that lead to a highway. You have all of these concepts and ideas and categories and you got to pull them together and make something linear out of 
the otherwise chaos. And, and I think leader's role is one, to pull it all together to get moving on that track. And then once it's moving on that track, keep it moving on that track, which isn't always easy. In fact, it's one of the most challenging aspects. And then from there, when variables arise that warrant changing direction. You know, uh, I want to go back to what you said about making things simple. Uh, I know I've said it before, but uh, if you're new listening to this, this is probably one of the most important lessons of leadership, I think, at least in my experience. There's a lesson uh, uh, called, uh, it was a phrase developed by Ayn Rand called the Crow Epistemology. And this is probably the most important lesson I've ever learned in strategy and leadership. And, and the lesson is this. The story is that back in the 50s, there was a group of scientists and they were doing a study on crows and they went to the woods and one scientist went to the wood line and he saw this open field with a bunch of crows in the field. As he went to the edge, the crows saw him, flew up into the tree line. And then when the scientist turned around and left, the crows returned back to their original spot. So the scientist said, ah, there's something here. So again, he comes with another friend, two, two scientists. They go to the edge, and again, the crows see them. They fly away, and when the, the scientists turn around and leave, the crows return. They do this again for three people, and the same results. And finally, they do it with five. Five scientists go, but the crows fly up. They're watching. But this time, instead of all five scientists leave, three scientists leave, and two remain. They remain in the same spot. When those three scientists left, the crows returned back to the same spot. And the lesson is that all living creatures have a, a mental capacity, they, that they can only hold so many distinct ideas at one time. And, and as Connor said, you know, us humans have that same kind of mental capacity. And what I've heard is it's seven to nine distinct units. And the challenge here, especially as a leader, as a manager, or a, as an executive, is that you have to create those kind of orders and direction that I think best uh, people can recall them with the daily noise because people aren't just dealing what with their jobs dealing with suppliers distributors customers their daily lives all this noise it, what do you think Does that makes sense to you connor absolutely you know construction is uh it's a tough industry it's tends to be a zero-sum game uh unfortunately there aren't too many win-wins uh, and it's a very cyclical and you have many, many uh, disparate parties uh, that despite your best intentions and willingness and desire to create the win-wins, it doesn't always shake out that way. It's the goal. Like I said, it's a tough business and it doesn't always to where you have designers and you have engineers and you have architects and you have municipal inspectors and you have state regulators and utility providers, subcontractors, vendors, on and on and on and on. And it's pulling it all together and getting everyone moving in one direction, keeping everyone moving in that direction. And when it's warranted, which hopefully isn't too often, making sure that you're veering in a different direction that will get you to the end goal in a timely manner. Uh, and again, with everyone on board. So I couldn't even agree with you more. It, yeah. It's bringing order from chaos. Yeah. Keeping people focused. I love it. So after we talked, we, we spoke about your second paragraph here, which is really, you've identified the metrics for success. The third paragraph is a little, it's a little bigger, but what's so fascinating is you have simplified what we're talking about you've taken all this complexity all these this multitude of, of of things you're working with and you boil them down to three things three things which you're responsible for and which your office is responsible for and i'm going to quote here what is you know what is the purpose of this memo well connor writes it quote quite simply it is to build jersey to build the team build the projects and build the marketplace reputation i'll say that again the build the team, the projects, and the marketplace reputation. So it's team development, project excellence, and branding, marketing, right? Building Jersey is our rallying cry for the year. Uh, and, and what that rallying cry means is those three elements. Building Jersey, excuse me, building the team, 
building the structures, building the marketplace reputation. If we do those three things, we achieve the rallying cry. And if we achieve that rallying cry in those three things, we, we deliver a satisfied client, an engaged team, safe projects, and uh, the profitability that we set out to achieve. And so, the, so again, we've, all, we've talked right now about the fr- really the half of a page of your document one, half of page. The rest of the neck, the following two pages, are those three essential elements, building the teams, building the projects, and the marketplace reputation. So you actually have uh, section one, building the team, and you go in, you basically define it, and then you go into really three or four, what would you call those, uh, essential metrics per, ta- or per area, like building yeah, a team? I, I would say tasks and targets and behaviors. Uh, so within building the team, you know, we need to be focusing on building our core competencies so that we're all doing things in a similar manner. Uh, that the team dynamic, which is the culture of the team, and that we're doing so in a line manner to our core values as a company of safety, accountability, integrity, continuous improvement, and collaboration. See, to me, this is fascinating because you, you have, again, encapsulated what success looks like, and you've done it in a way that from the executive, from the administrative assistant to the frontline worker to the supervisor, on their hands, they can talk about this. Building a team, uh, project excellence, market reputation, they can, they can talk it from their hand. It's easy to remember, and when chaos ensues, when things get a little noisy, they can always recall it. And, and I think the biggest aspect there is the behaviors to which your point when chaos ensues and people have questions on what to do or how to act, it says right there, tenacity, aggressiveness, uh, read, talk, discuss, argue, disagree, commit, move forward, always forward. It, it gives a clear understanding of when communication lines break down and you're operating in your small team or by yourself and a decision has to be made and you can't uh, get in touch with someone to run it past, that you know generally, okay, if I act in accordance with these uh, behaviors, I'm generally uh, aligned with, with the expectation and the intention. I love it. I love it. So there we have, if you're looking at the computer now, you have uh, the first section or the first uh, essential building the team. Look at this, building the projects, same thing. Know your points of strength and points of weakness. Be concerned first and foremost at the outset of the project to create momentum and accountability. Mitigate risk. Again, each of those three elements are subdivided into three elements, which are easily, easily, they, it can be easily repeated and retained. So this is fantastic. I have to ask you, well, I've told you before, I, when I worked as a, a war planner in Korea, I remember these general officers spending days, days on a, on a paragraph of a commander's intent, albeit it was a big organization, but you, what, you put to, what you put here is incredibly difficult. A lot of, I, I can tell you a lot of colonels and majors out there have a difficult time putting this together, and you did it successfully. How did you do it? What, did you, what were your resources? You know, what, what inspired it uh, was my, my military background as well as uh, this past fall I had completed reading uh, Call Sign Chaos, uh, General Mattis's uh, biography. And so that's what, that's what prompted it. In terms of creating it, I didn't have a template to create. I, I don't know that there is one of what it should entail. Uh, I think I had read a few examples and I just sat down and I, I did exactly that of trying to take, okay, what leads to successful projects? What leads to successful teams? What leads to successful and satisfied client relationships? Let's think about each one of those and distill and boil it down into simple, readable, graspable uh, 
uh, memorable uh, components and publish it. And so it, it took took a few hours, uh, reviewed it with some, some teammates, uh, said, does this make sense? Where does it, where doesn't it? There were some, some minor edits and, and we got it out. And I think there's been a good reception to it. I think the biggest thing is the follow-up and the follow-through, weaving it into messaging constantly to where it gets adopted. Uh, the second aspect that I think is critical is doing it in chunks. Uh, at the outset of the year, we were more concerned about building the team than we were about building the marketplace reputation. We weren't trying to do all three things all at once. Built the team, getting us rock solid to where now, okay, let's focus on the structures. The second and the third quarter of this year, we've been building the structures and we will continue to do so. In the fourth quarter of the year, we're going to shift a lot of focus onto building that marketplace reputation. Now, while we were building the structures, we're still team building and we're still building the marketplace reputation, but the primary focus was at that point in time, the structures. Conversely, in the first quarter, we were wholly focused on building the team and the structures and the reputation secondary. And so I, I think the takeaway from that is doing it in chunks, not all at once, and continually talking about it, weaving it in, the rallying cry, the building jersey, what that means, asking people, uh, spot checking. Now, for people out there who are not military, what does spot checking mean? Spot checking means uh, it's the opposite of micromanagement. It is, uh, you know, folks know that uh, you're, you're going to, do an inspection or an overlook of any given work stream at any given time, but not necessarily any pattern to what that work stream or timing is to where it's a, it's a, it's a surprise check. Are, are aspects of the workload being done uh, to quality standards? So basically you could be on a site one day even talking to a potential customer and you can walk over to a frontline worker, frontline construction workers, worker and say, Hey, wh what are, what are one of the three essentials we're focusing on? Right? Exactly. 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 Checking up on everyone. Um, just driving it, making it fun. Uh, you know, one of the, one of the biggest things that uh, I have to remind myself is not everyone has the same background as I do. And, they don't have to be doing this. They have options. Um, we're, we're grateful for their involvement. And so making it fun to where they want to adopt it because, you know, uh, I'm not a commissioned officer in the military to where they have to listen to me. Uh, so no, making, you know, it making it fun, getting together for drinks and discussions and, uh, keeping it light, but constantly talking about the purpose of it and how it fits into the whole. You know, I've always said that the difference between the army and uh, the military and the civilian world is if it, in civilian world, if you take your, if you take your, your company to fight the other company, your, your people can leave and join the other force during the battle. So, <laughs> so I, I would tell you that is incredibly, incredibly important point here because you're using a military, um, a, a military document with you know with with a military mindset, but it is not a it is not a military execution at all. And so yeah, what you said. So I think it's incredibly important. It has to be fun. You can't be drilling people. Hey, what is this? What is this? But you know, encourage them to learn it. And you've made it so simple, right? So let me ask you this: What you mentioned, you had a good reception. Can you give an example? I mean. How did you present this to people? How, how did, you know, when you present it to them, were they like, uh, you know, was there, was there any reluctance or were, were they really open? Oh, that totally makes sense. How did they grasp it? I think it was initially uh, very well received. Uh, I think there was some um, tension once we got into 
uh, the process of the building the structures um, to where, you know, like they can, that accountability part, that can be tough. Um, you know, both holding other people accountable as well as holding yourself accountable and being willing to accept accountability when uh, you yourself fall short, uh, myself included. Uh, I encourage everyone to uh, do two things. One, peer leadership. Uh, it's critical, absolutely critical to be holding each other uh, accountable. It, it's an effective team. And I say, where I fall short, hold me accountable. And then the other thing is, to those accountable high standards, delegate. You're ultimately the one accountable for it. But if you don't have the capacity for it, you have teammates to rely on. You just need to communicate it and delegate and say, help me out. And they have the option to do so based on their bandwidth. And if they're not able to, you go find someone else. But not getting it done is not an excuse. Uh, and I tell people all the time, please delegate to me, delegate to me. You know, I'll set the mission and how you get it done within the confines is on you. And if you need support doing it, let me know. I'm running right beside you. Man, this has been great. This has been really fascinating. And I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be interested in this because, again, this document is really uh, well, let me ask you on a scale of one to 10, 10 being extraordinarily helpful, one being not helpful at all. How would you rate, how would you grade this document in, in uh, supporting you and your leadership? Uh, to be determined. <laughs> I hear you. Well, I can tell you, uh, very impressive. Again, you've done what a lot of people cannot do. You've condensed the, com the, com the complex into the simple, and boy, you hit the whole organization. So before we go, do you, any, any recommendations, anything you want to say, anything uh, you want people to know about you, about your lessons, life lessons? Yeah, I mean, I, one, I appreciate the question. Two, I appreciate the time. And three, in response to the question, you know, I don't know that it's it's any sort of silver bullet. Uh, time will tell. Uh, it is a document that uh, it, it's it's putting my head and my thoughts on paper on what defines success of a successful team, successful projects, and uh, what success in the marketplace is. I think it's a good start. Uh, knock on wood. It will bear fruit. Uh, but I'm just very grateful for the team who's willing to adopt it. It's a change year, and with change years come inherent tensions. And so uh, it, it's been a lot of fun, and we got a, another four or so months to go. So we'll uh, we'll report back then. All right. Well, thank you, Connor Evans. Hey, this has been great. I appreciate your time, and uh, we'll let you go. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, Kevin. Take care. See ya. See ya. This is Black Market Leadership.